So he's like, oh, we, we, we sample these these uh, plant-based burgers and they're really good. People are are eating them and they're like, man, this tastes like it. He's like, well, I cooked it in bacon grease. They're like, oh. Hey guys, thank you so much for supporting us and watching our videos. If you'd like to support us some more and get some of our merchandise like this awesome apron, be sure to check out our website at thecarnivorevolution.com. Hey everybody, welcome to The Carnivore Revolution. I'm Serena and my guest today is not a carnivore, but very interesting, very nice, and you guys are going to love this because he's a butcher. So we're going to talk all things meat, and I can't wait to talk about it. Anthony Bartleson, thank you so much for hanging out. You guys know him as the Meat Dad on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, everywhere, right? Everywhere, everywhere. The Meat Dad. Even at the Meat Dad. Now. So <laughs> awesome. So awesome. So I want to know, like, as a kid, did you grow up thinking, hey, I want to be a butcher? I mean, how did, how did that happen? What made you want to be a butcher? No, it was just... Uh, random. It was random from the from the get go. I was a uh, a, a bagger at a grocery store, and I, you know, I just you know, I was a kid, eighteen years old, and all of a sudden they needed some help in the seafood department, and I'm like, man, I'd rather do that than than go uh, bag stuff and <laughs> and then go get all the carts. So I went to the seafood department. I learned a bunch about fish, and then as I was doing it, uh, I would help the meat guys at nighttime. So I'd help them stock stuff and just do some stuff and they offered me uh, an apprenticeship to become a butcher. And I had no idea what I was getting into. I just knew that I enjoyed steak <laughs> and I said, all right, let's do it. So I got myself into a, a two year apprenticeship, became a, 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 a union butcher. And uh, from then on, I, yeah, just, I've done it for the, the past 20 years on and off from different places, different States. And yeah, it's, it's been incredible. It's been an incredible uh, journey. That's awesome. Now, Anthony has, uh, like I said, more than a million followers on all of his different platforms, which I think is super cool because it has been very helpful. Your videos are very, very helpful to people who don't know how to do these things, like um, buying a whole chicken and being able to cut it up and different slices of meat. I mean, recipes, your videos are really, really engaging. What made you decide as a, a dad and a butcher to start creating that kind of content? So I... I wasn't really a content creator, let's just say. Um, I kind of fell into making content, uh, just showing people a, a couple of videos about how to break down chickens and and stuff like that. But what I really ended up seeing that people got engaged with is is saving money, and but not only that, like getting it done themselves and doing it themselves. So I kind of looked at this whole thing of like what what everyone was commenting, and I'm like, wait a minute people really want to know about, you know, how to, how to break this stuff down and do this. So I kind of flipped it, the, the butcher role reversed. And so what we've always learned to do is we've learned to make as much money on everyone as possible. Right. And so you break down a big chunk of meat and then you get five different cuts. Well, these five different cuts are all going to go for different prices. So one's a center cut, one's for stir fry, one's for ground beef, one's for stew. And then it's all the same piece of beef. And most people don't think about it. They're just like, oh, there's stew meat or, oh, there's stir fry, whatever it may be. But the way that I see it is like, this is a big piece of meat. How much did this cost to start with? And so if you just think about it like that, all right, now I have a top round. If you buy this thing whole, it's $3.99 a pound, right? But if you buy it over here already cut, it's $5.99 or buy this piece over here, it's $6.99 or seven, whatever it may be, your ground beef. And so all these things end up adding up. And so that's what we do is that's how you make your margin as a butcher. So I'm like, why are we letting people do this at home? We have big pieces of meat available in certain parts of the country and different stores. Why don't I just start teaching people? And so I just kind of was running more with like, hey, this is how you can get a good piece of meat at an affordable price. And then I started doing it with chicken and turkey and then pork. And it's just like, wow, I guess this is really helpful because we don't learn this. This is something... I grew up eating boneless, skinless chicken breasts because that's what my mom got. But me today, it's like the only time I'll buy something like that is if they're really, really, really inexpensive. Otherwise, I'm just going to buy the whole chicken because I'm going to use all of it anyway. I'm going to break it down. I'm going to take the breasts off. And then the rest of the chicken is pretty much free. Then you get the bones, the skin, you make your stock, you make your soup, you make, I mean, it, it, nothing goes to waste. But there's a lot of people that just don't like to touch it or don't like to do it. And so... You know, that's where I come in and I, I try and make it a little bit easier for people to understand it's not that hard. We can do this. <laughs>
Yeah, I was really funny about raw meat before I became a carnivore. I mean, even as a 47-year-old mom of four, I had a really hard time. Like when I would make chicken, it always had to be from frozen because I didn't like to touch it. Um, so I get that. I, you know, yep. I, and <laughs> now I probably could cut up a piece of meat. I don't want to like go butcher a cow or anything, but I think at this point, if I had a big chunk of meat that needed to be cut up into different, you know, cuts of um steak or, you know, whatever like you're talking about, I think I probably could do it. So okay. um so yeah, I mean, I think I could. Um, so now as a butcher, do you usually recommend that people get their meat from a local butcher shop or is a grocery store like basically the same thing? That's it's all preference. So this is where the this is where it's difficult for most people to understand. So it's not about what grocery store, it's about what they're actually carrying, what they're actually offering behind the counter. And so you can say. There's a chain store, but it might be a really good chain store, you know, uh, that they have quality beef, right? And so it's it's hard to say, depending on what where what you're what you want as the customer, that's uh that's kind of the it's hard. So for instance, if you're coming going into Whole Foods, you're most likely thinking about getting something that's hormone free, antibiotic free, free range, all the stuff, right? And so you're going in there expecting that. And so that's going to be a, a high quality product because that's what they're, you know, they stand behind. And it could be the same thing at a local butcher shop. You have to, you have to kind of understand what, and they got to explain their process. This is free range, this and this. So we have a local place next to us uh, that's close to me that it looks beautiful. They have nice counter, but their meat comes from Cisco. So Cisco Systems, the biggest distributor, but it's a small butcher shop. And so your mind says, oh, I'm going to a small butcher shop. I'm getting this farm to table, blah, blah, blah. But if you don't ask questions, you're never going to actually know where this stuff came from. And so it's kind of a it's kind of a tricky thing because you never really know. You know, and then people get upset when they go to a real butcher shop and they get pasture raised uh, pork. And it's twenty two ninety nine a pound for a pork chop. And they're like, this is ridiculous. Well, this is the actual stuff that you want. But if you go to your store, you're going to pay, you know, two, three dollars a pound. That's obviously not the, the pork that you're talking about. So wanting something and then actually wanting to pay for something is like it's, it's a really difficult thing. We went through that a lot with grass fed meats. Right. A lot of people would say, I want grass fed meat. And then as soon as we bring it in, I would say we sell about eight percent of it. Right. Nobody really wanted it because it's a little more expensive and it's lean. So two things that most people are like, what? It's more expensive and it doesn't taste as good. Right. And so most people are like, man, I'm not going to buy that. I, I, it sounded good. I would have done it, but I'm not doing that. And so, again, it's more of like what you personally want, you know, and that's why it's like you got to really do your uh, your research. So, uh, and that leads me to my next question. Um, as far as doing research goes, what are the top five things that people should ask their local butcher if they're thinking about buying local? Well, I mean, for, I would say like, you know, is it, is it your, is it your cow? Is it like, <laughs> is it your stuff? Are you getting it? You know, are you getting it? Because again, this is where, this is where it's tricky because there's a lot of things now saying they're it's local stuff, but it's not actually like it's not done locally. And so, for instance, again, a Whole Foods, they can say local if each state touches them. So that's still local to them. And so the local thing, the first thing I would just do is you if you want to buy some pasture raised stuff that's local to you is go online and then just literally look it up. So look wherever your area is, just say Who's selling a cow in my area? I mean, it's that it's that simple. There are websites. There's all sorts of different things, but start there. And then you're going to get the list of all the different things. And then you can have an idea of what you're looking for. So some of them are going to sell grass fed. Some of them are going to sell Angus. Some are going to sell Wagyu. They're all different kinds of, of cows as well. So the price points are different. You can get a, a quarter of a cow somewhere for 500, but you can also get a quarter of a cow somewhere else for 2,500. So it's all different, you know, it's all different uh, stuff. So back to the question, what was the question? Let's go with what are some things people should ask a butcher if they're looking to shop local? Yeah, I guess I would just say, is it raised local? Um, is it, you know, hormone free, pasture raised, um, antibiotic free? I know a lot of this stuff, um, they say that, you know, that it, there's different vaccines. I mean, there's a lot of things I don't, you know, I don't want to get too deep into, but. 
you should just basically get familiar with with the the butcher, the farm, and then you know, and you can consistently go there. So I would just I would say just like anything else, just become friends with these people. <laughs> if they're yeah, feeding and then you, you're become su- friends. Yeah, and then you're supporting local too, rather than you know a big company like Walmart or Sam's or even Whole Foods. You know, at this point, yeah, it, you can support somebody local if you do that. So, in your exactly. opinion, what's the what's the best cut of meat? Oh man, that's tough. That's tough. So there's so many that you you know I I, kind of, I always think of it like if this was my last meal, right? Like in, in my last steak, what am I going to have? Because obviously everybody loves a ribeye, but I always tend to lean towards uh, outside skirt steak. So it just has basically the whole thing is similar to like the the lifter on the ribeye, like the spinalis. It has this similar texture, and so if you just kiss that thing on the grill after it was marinated and then keep it rare in the middle and then slice it across the grain. It just has this different texture where you can pull it apart, but at the same time, it's, it's tender, but it still has chew. It's, it's, it's a weird piece of meat to explain because it's just a little bit different. So they have that. And then along with like a hanger steak, it's a, it's kind of similar. You get that kind of same texture and feel. So. That's interesting that your two are ones you barely ever hear anybody talk about. So uh-huh. that's I think that's really great advice is to kind of think outside the box and try some different cuts. You might find something that you like better than because like I know a lot of people just like are in love with ribeye and I love ribeye too. I mean, there's not much I don't love when it comes to like steak and meat. But what about people who like the ribeye, but they can't afford it. Cause I hear that a lot as a carnivore. I hear that a lot from people like, well, everybody eats ribeye and I can't afford ribeye. So what do you suggest? What's like the closest thing to ribeye? A chuck eye. So there's a chuck eye steak and I show it on a lot of my videos. You can either buy them. They're going to be less expensive than the ribeye. If, if they cut them, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll be less expensive than the ribeye, but you could also get them off of the chuck yourself. And so if you buy a whole, this is what I always recommend. Like if you're, if you're, especially if you're doing the carnivore diet, if you can go to like a, a Costco business center or a restaurant depot, or even go to your local butcher and ask if you can buy a whole chuck roll, right? It's a boneless chuck roll. And then the first about four or five inches is going to be chuck eye. So you're going to get chuck eye steaks. So you can cut them as thick or as thin as you want. So you can get four thin ones, three thicker ones, whatever you want. But it, then it has another piece around it that's your Denver steak. So you basically, that first, you know, yeah, four four or five inches, you're just going to take that. And then that is that is straight, really, really good steak. Then you can actually cut a, a couple more pieces off that are just like thin chuck steaks. Throw those on the grill, season them up. Makes really, really good fast steak. And then carne asada, turn it into carne asada. And then the rest of it, you got your stew meat. And then you can grind it for hamburger. You got... Uh, a, a roast. We didn't even talk about this. this is the main purpose for that whole thing. And so there's so many different things. And then shredded beef, just anything that you you trim off of your thing. Let's just be, people get nervous. They don't, they're like, I don't have a meat grinder. Don't need it. Just take all of that meat, put it into your Insta pot or your pot, whatever it is, pour liquid in there and let it go. Braise all that. Now you have shredded meat with all the stuff that you were going to get rid of. Right. And so yeah, I, I'm trying to figure out every way. The same thing with tallow, you know, like, uh, you know, I know you, you're you're into the tallow, but I'm into the tallow too. I do night anyone that gets rid of uh, this rid of their fat. I'm just like no, no, no. This is this is the gold right here. Right now, as a matter of fact, I have like two pounds of this like liquid gold wagyu Kobe beef. This two hundred dollar tallow that I'm have to make anyway. It's just a bunch of yeah. fat. <laughs> yeah, and people don't know that you can actually go to your butcher or you can go to your grocery store. A lot of times they'll give you the beef fat for free after they trim it. My favorite is ribeye fat, so I will go to my butcher. I think he charges me 99 cents a pound maybe or something. He was just going to throw it away. So what does he care? Um but the ribeye fat is my favorite and sometimes I will just cook that like it is and eat it crispy. I mean there's really just nothing like some really good ribeye fat. Yep. And I'll tell you what as as I was a butcher for many years and people would come and ask me for fat. I have no problem. Just be polite. Don't expect it because then if you do that, it's going to kind of turn it into the other direction of like, wait a minute, I'm doing you a favor. And so I've seen a lot of guys that at least if you're going to ask for something that's a little bit out of the ordinary, because they might have to get it from all the other fat, just do it in a way where it makes them feel happy to do it for you. That's just a, uh, 
it's a it's a thing i guess for anything but i just i remember just yeah. a, there's a lot of guys through the years that are like why am i going to do this for you we're just so rude and forceful about give me this yeah they're like oh we don't have to so right yeah yeah, yeah. yeah that's, a, mind- that's another thing be nice to your butcher like yeah. I, again if you if you have a butcher be nice to, i'm just saying in general like you're going to see this person all the time. This is like your hairstylist or whatever it may be. You're going to see them just treat them kind. And then we're going to treat you just as good back because, it, you know, if you're happy, it's going to make us happy. You know, it's it's like, again, it's just that it's another rule for the world, right? Yeah, <laughs> just, absolutely. Yeah. Be kind. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. And then um, one of the things that I have found out in the last year that I did not know about before is a standing rib roast. And yeah. just how easy that is to cook because um, it's very similar to prime rib, which I called it prime rib in a video one time, and people were all over me about how that's not prime rib. It's just the, don't worry the, about that. It's I mean, gonna it's be the same thing. It, it goes it goes both ways all the time. So it's, yeah, it's just the know. grade. It just means that mine wasn't prime, but it's fine. It was delicious. Um, but I was shocked at how to make this, where you put it in the oven on five hundred for you explained it. Five minutes per yeah. pound and then what? Five minutes a pound. Yeah. Yeah. In the oven, five minutes a pound. So uh five pound piece of meat, 25 minutes, and then you turn it off for two hours. Do not open the door no matter what. And you're done. And it's already cool. It's already rested. But I will, I like to throw in this. If you have a fancy oven with like a self-cooling system or something, please don't try this because it's going to take all the hot air out of there. And so, or the the heat. And so I've had a few people go, oh, that didn't work. And we, ex- you know, we get the explanation of like, oh, well, I have this really nice oven that it cools. <laughs> and like, oh, okay. No, no, it's not going to work. Yeah. Yeah. I have made it like that four or five times in the last year. So good. I recently Publix had a big sale and I went to Publix for, um, they do it, I guess, at Christmas and at Easter. And it was last year, it was $3.99 a pound. This oh. year, I think it was $6.99 a pound. They learned their lesson. The guy told uh-huh. me that like all over the country, they sold out like at $3.99 a pound. So now it's $6.99 a pound. I'm still willing to pay that because it's unbelievable. And they'll actually cut it into steaks for you. And then you also get the ribs, you know, with it. Um, or they'll oh, just leave it as the roast. Um, but for six ninety nine a pound, so we bought several of them. They're in the freezer, and I have like designated times throughout the year <laughs> that I plan on making those. Um, because it's that is probably my favorite cut of meat, especially now that I know how easy it is. I mean, like, come on, that's like no, and you don't cover it, right? You just put it on a pan and you cook it. And so I'll tell you the best part is it's not only that cut. You can do that with any logical roast that you're supposed to roast so mm-hmm. i wouldn't say something like a chuck roast because you really want to braise that but okay so a top like a top round so you know when you go to the deli and you buy fresh roast beef they're using top round okay. and so what they're doing is cooking it in a similar process where it's just pink in the middle right yeah so you can do the same exact thing so you get a piece of top round roast for i don't know five dollars a pound uh-huh. And then you throw it in the oven, do the same exact thing we just talked about, and then it'll turn out perfect. Do the same thing with it with a sirloin tip. Do the same thing. I've done it with tri tip. I've done it with yeah, I've done it with uh, picanhas. And so just to test it, I'm like, oh, let me try it. And I've also done ten minutes a pound, and it didn't ruin it. It actually just made it a little bit more medium than the rare. Okay. And so I'm like, all right. So the more you mess with it, okay. it's a really easy, especially for people that just like, hey, throw something in the oven. Yeah. Walk away, go finish what you're doing, then you come out and dinner is ready. And you just slice it up. Yes. And I never can remember. Cover it with foil or no? No. Leave no it okay. Un- okay. That's what I thought. I always I have to look it up every single time. No, you want that it. I can never remember. You want that crust on there. Okay. Got it. Yep. Man, if you guys haven't tried that, give it a shot. Okay. A couple more things. <laughs> um, what do you think about like plant-based meat and lab grown meat? I mean, there's a place for it, I guess, for for people that that like it, you know. Um, I don't I don't personally think it's bad or good. Hmm. I think it's just, I think it's what it's all upon opinion. You know, um, I've had it and it's, it's fine. Uh, I've done like the Burger King impossible. I've done it at like work functions and it, it did the, it did the job, it, you know, yeah. I mean, Hey, I mean, if you want to eat, but, um, I'm not, I'm not personally like, I'm not a vegetarian or I never plan to be, <laughs> but, I would eat it if you were to serve it to me, but it, there's certain there's certain things. So again, I've tried the some of this other plant based sausages, or oh man, and it's absolutely it's it's tough. It's tough to go. So I, I you know personally, if I became a plant based person, 
I might eat a little more fried tofu <laughs> just because you can cover it in sauce. But uh, yeah, besides that, I mean, if you like it, hey, go do your thing. But uh, for me, uh, yeah, it's. I, uh, I appreciate your impartiality there. That is not what I expected at all. I expected. Yeah, you to no, ask- no that, and that's for me. I'm not that person. And so yeah. there was there was people behind the counter. We they had them actually in the meat department. So they made a move, and they're like, "Hey, we have to put these in right next to the ground beef." And everybody's, "Oh man, why would you put? It's not even real meat." And everybody's getting all upset and bent out of shape. And then me personally, I'm just like, "You're just." putting something else out there that maybe somebody wants. I think it doesn't really, yeah. ma- it doesn't really matter. If someone else is going to eat it. You don't have to buy it. You don't have to do nothing mm-hmm. with it. And so I even had a guy do some samples of the stuff, but he cooked it in bacon grease. Oh. And so, but he had to put it on the oh, Yes, it was so, and he's like, oh, we, we, we sample these, these uh, plant-based burgers and they're really good. People are, are eating them and they're like, man, this tastes like it. He's like, well, I cooked it in bacon grease. They're like, oh, <laughs> make sure you put that on the sign. Yeah, probably some upset vegans in the house that yeah, that day yeah, the store. yeah. Let's we won't, I won't say any names. So, what do you think about um, people who what what do you have to say to people who think that still believe that meat is bad for them, especially beef? Do you have an opinion on that, or like advice you would give to somebody? Look, I mean, it's a, I'm the same way with that or anything else. If it if it belongs in your life, then you'll know it, and if it doesn't then you'll also know that. I mean, I don't, I'm not partial to anything. It's, it's animal, it's protein. If you like it, you like it. If you don't, please be my guest to not, you know, to not have anything to do with it. Everything to me in this world is a personal decision and a personal choice. And so for me, I don't banter anybody for, for saying they like it. I'll give them a hard time. Like, Oh, if you eat raw meat or rare, if it's not rare, it's not good. You know, but it's all in fun and games. If, you eat your food however you want to eat your food. If it makes you feel good, hey, go for it. If you know, but b- beyond that, I mean, I can care less about what anybody else thinks about it. So <laughs> that's it. That's, that's it. I mean, it's it doesn't affect me. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't yeah. affect me. So for me, yeah. I like a steak once in a while. I'll eat mm-hmm. a steak, and hey, that's it. Yeah, that's very refreshing. Um, because so many people are just so like negative and like even hateful, you know, in some things. And I'm, and I'm, I mean, I have shared my share of opinions and, you know, and memes about it and things like that, but ultimately you're right. Like if you just eat what you want and, you know, I do believe meat is super healthy. I believe it has all the nutrients that I need, um, has way more nutrients than kale, way more nutrients than any plant-based meat. Like I would rather just have the real thing, but you're right. I mean, I, you know, there's room for all of us. There is room. And, you know, like I, and I'll be honest, like I would, I, I was talking to you a little bit earlier, but I, I want to put myself in the carnivore diet yeah. for a little while and just to see like what improvements and, you know, obviously there's people that really like it. And the only way for me to even judge something like that is to personally try it. Mm-hmm. So again, it's the same thing with like being a vegan, but I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I, I just can't, you know, not yet at least, you know, not, <laughs> not, not at this time. Uh, but no, I, I find it intriguing because yeah. if it is making people actually feel better, like not only physically, but mentally, there's something behind it. So yeah. whatever it may be, if it's just the meat or if they just stopped eating all the carbs and stopped yeah. eating all the junk, because I've, I've been in, you know, the the random, like I've had paleo or I've done this or this. And yeah, man, you feel a lot better. <laughs> you feel yeah. a lot better when you're not eating a bunch of junk. Yeah. Definitely. That's true. You feel oh, a lot yeah. better. Okay. If you go carnivore, you're coming back on so we can talk about it, right? All right. I got yeah. you. I got you. Yes, Absolutely. for sure. Okay. Anthony, this was a refreshing and pleasurable 30 minutes. I really appreciate you doing this for me. I appreciate it as well. This was fun. Thank you so much. Very educational. Anthony, thanks again. And we'll see you next time here on the Carnivore Revolution. All right. <laughs> Bye. That was good. Thank you so much. That was very good.